Hi, this is Christine Tully, Executive Writing Coach and President of Defend and Publish. Welcome to Episode 47, the 15-Minute Writing Session. This session came about in part in response to a workshop from some folks at Portland State University. A little shout out to them. We were talking about time management and how to juggle teaching and scholarship, but the larger conversation turned to the realities of academic positions today. Many of us have more classes. We're teaching more overload. Our teaching loads have gotten, um, you know, part of our contract, they've gotten higher. We have more service responsibilities. We may not have as much time for scholarship or all of our scholarship came back at once. Uh, a couple of participants talked about this in the event that say two or three conferences got canceled and then they all came back the same year on top of newer conferences coming in. You might actually have six conference proposals to be working on instead of three because of the backlog of COVID things. We also talked about um, how chronic health illness or uh, chronic health conditions might be a problem. Um, you might have the situation where you're not able to work as long and as hard as you used to. So even if the time does present itself, the last thing you feel like doing is sitting at a desk all day. So one of the things that we talked about then was what can you actually do in 15 minutes? And so I'm going to share um, some slides to show what you might be able to do. Okay, let me just pop these up. And here we go. Okay, so the 15 minute writing session is an idea that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, I read a book by Bridget Schulte that talked about time confetti and it's referenced in an article that I'm going to show on screen. It's called Time Confetti and the Broken Promise of Leisure is the article um, by Ashley Willens. And it references um, Schulte's book basically on why women are so overtaxed and unfocused on, on certain areas of their lives. So it was really about um, the larger project of trying to juggle a career and family and some other things. But in this case, this article actually comes from behavioral psychology, and it just looked at why leisure time doesn't really feel like leisure. And one of the figures in there that I saw really captured um, what it looks like when somebody has some leisure time between, say, 7 and 8 p.m. at night, how often they're looking at Twitter and texts and emails. And it's not that those things are inherently law, uh, wrong. We've been probably yelled at enough by other scholars about, about that type of thing. Um, but what it does do is it just says that it makes time feel more compressed. And even when you have leisure time, it's not something that you can necessarily, um, you, you, can, you don't necessarily feel like you're relaxing. And so we feel we're time poor. We just don't have enough time. So what happens is the way to make ourselves feel better is that we like to do tasks that can be easily accomplished in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, so say something like, instead of really digging deep into that theoretical problem that's going on in our article manuscript, instead we would rather check an email or respond to a student or, you know, take a look at the next committee meeting schedule because it feel, we feel a sense of relief and satisfaction that we were able to check something off. So one of the things I started thinking about then is why are we not getting the same type of relief when we use those 15 minute chunks or why can't we get that same type of relief when we use those 15 minute chunks to check off tasks for our own writing? It always seems like 15 minutes is not enough. And I, I say this all the time uh, to the faculty at my university, but also in workshops that I give is that I regularly use 15 minutes um, to work. And this is a habit I developed just with a more compressed time schedule after having children, but also that I've tried to reserve my weekends as much as possible for family things. So for me to do that, I really need to max out the uh, daytime hours during the week. And so what I started thinking about then is what are all the things that I do in 15 minutes that I'm able to regularly and reasonably get completed? Um, and so we talked about some of those, and I'd like to show you what a few of those are. So what I did was I looked at some time confetti, those little teeny scraps of time on a random Monday. So I just looked at anything I had where I had around 15 minutes. And there's there's four that on most Mondays I can count on. One of them is ran, um not always a regular thing, but sometimes. So I really have these three holes um, during my day. 
that I, uh, I know are going to happen and then this one that sometimes happens. So let me give you an example. Um, between 11.35 and 11.50, I have a time where I arrive back at my office after one meeting and then I have to leave again for a class at 11.50. So I know I have roughly 15 minutes end to end, sometimes 17, sometimes 16, but roughly 15 minutes end to end. That one I can count on pretty much every Monday. I also have um, time, we, uh, usually between 325 and 340, um, waiting on one of my children who does lots of like makeup tests and things like that at the high school after school. And it seems like every Monday she's got one of those. I've got two others. Um, one is between 205 and 220 that I do I use to try to knock out any kind of like phone calls where I have to call somebody during the day. Um, it's just kind of a lull after lunch. And that's the time that I'd rather call the dentist's office or the health insurance place. And that's what I did on this particular Monday. And then the last one was just a, a random fragment I had in there where I had to kind of stay by a dryer for 15 minutes while I was waiting for a, a, one of my kids' uniforms to be dry enough to take somewhere. So I couldn't really leave the dryer. I kept wanting to go check it every couple of minutes, uh, but I really needed to kind of stay right by it so I could grab the uniform and run. So these are the kinds of times that I'm talking about. Nobody would say any of these times are really ideal to sit down and, and do a lot of writing. And even with these four, I actually figured out on that same day when I looked at my calendar that there were three other scraps in there that were uh, like around 10 minutes or 11 minutes that if I wanted to, I could have tried to make something of. And I will say something about not trying to do that. But these are the four that I want to show what I actually got done. So one of the things that I did was I, in the first session, so that was the one in the morning around 1135, I had a manuscript open up on my desktop. And when I went back, I or went back between these meetings, I was able to turn in some quote or turn quotes in this manuscript into paraphrases. I knew I was sort of over quoting in this particular sexual section of the manuscript where there was not a, enough of my voice, you know, something we're always trying to teach our students to do. So I really took a hard look at what quotes could be cut down, what could be paraphrased. And that was about five pages, but I definitely was able to do it. So I figured out three quotes definitely could be changed, could be altered. And I know the manuscript was actually a lot better because it had more of my own voice in it. And then, you know, I think I finished at like 1149 ish, you know, I jumped up, grabbed my bag and went on to my next thing. The one that I had at 205, that was where I was on hold. Um, that one, what I ended up doing, what that was the phone call that I was on hold um, with the insurance. One of the things that I ended up doing for that one was I was sitting on hold with the annoying music, you know, while you're waiting to talk to your insurance or whoever. And what I ended up doing was just copying out a paragraph that was bothering me out of the manuscript, putting it into a new document, and then playing with it for a while. So, you know, every two, three minutes, somebody would say something like, you know, your call is important to us. It really, clearly wasn't, but um, I had the, you know, I pretty much was on hold the full 15 minutes. So every couple of minutes I had that interruption, but I was able to just look at this one paragraph and try to do whatever I could to it to make it better. It was one of those paragraphs where I knew it was a little vague. I knew I needed a better transition, but I 15 minutes was like the right amount of time to play with it, even with the jangly annoying music of being on hold because I had already written it. I could just kind of look at it in little pieces. Um, the one, the one fragment that was at 325, this is when I was waiting for my daughter in the high school parking lot. I didn't have my laptop out. I didn't have that manuscript stuff with me. But one thing I did do was on my phone, I knew that there was a call for papers in there that had showed up in my email earlier that week. And so what I did was I opened it up. I knew I was kind of interested in it. I reread it again and then just took some quick notes and I wrote them on a post-it pad that I just kept in my car. And those, I know that I have an episode on post-its, which I will link link to um, in show notes if you're interested in seeing some other things I do with those. But I also have them in my car. And this was one case where I just took some notes on them and stuck them inside my planner. And then I know that they will translate then to my writing project. 
the last um, 15 minutes was where I was hanging out and waiting for the um, for, for the dryer. I needed to kind of sit near the laundry room and actually the hum of the dryer was perfect for me just zoning out and thinking about that manuscript I worked on earlier during the day. So not all the writing has to look the same. You can see here, sometimes it's yes, running back to your office, typing a little bit, running to where you need to go. Um, you know, sometimes it's just thinking about something. Sometimes it's looking at something in a different location, like on your phone. Um, but at least this particular day, if we think about it, I essentially did an hour's worth of work. I did, I mean, even though the thinking doesn't seem like work, it definitely was because the next day, the impact of thinking through that problem a little bit, I was able to use another scrap of time confetti that popped up later that day unexpectedly and really write down some ideas about fixing it. So one of the things I'd like to get to then is to think about just strategies for success to make this work. Because these kinds of 15 minute writing sessions, they're not for everybody. I don't wanna push them on everybody. And I don't think everybody wants these because for some faculty, they might find these very stressful. I tried to reframe this um, in a way, this is um, quoted in, a, in um, How Writing Faculty Write, a book that I've referenced a couple of times that I worked on in 2018. But one of my interviewees, uh, Danielle DeVos, talked about having a nice little like research window in these little scraps of time or time, you know, little time, fun time to work on writing. That's how I tended to view these like, oh, great, I can actually work on this project for a few minutes. I've been dying to get to it. Um, other people may find these very stressful. So if you're going to do it, let me throw out a couple ways that it might help you. Um, one, no matter what, because I feel like I want to get my work done during the weekdays as much as possible. That just tends to be the time I like to knock out work. I'm set up, so I'm ready for that time confetti. If it falls on me and I have a scrap, I'm able to, to get to it. Um, another thing is I try to match those tasks to location. So if I'm in the car, I'm not going to be working on something that's going to require my laptop for the most part. If I have to be walking somewhere, I might use that as some thinking time rather than you know, listen to music or do anything, I might just walk and think about it, like consciously commit to thinking through a problem while I'm doing that same 15 minutes, you know, to go get my next cup of coffee across campus. Um, another thing that I do is I keep an ongoing list of shorter tasks, because I do think more of us would actually like to use some of the 15 minutes, you know, here, not all the time, but here and there. And if you have that list at the ready, you know what to do. So you could, there's a lot of things you can accomplish in 15 minutes. You can Google 15 minute tasks. Um, creative writers use them all the time. There's hundreds and hundreds of ideas about things to do with creative writing that certainly would apply to academic writing. And so one thing I know that I'll be working on in the next month or two are a whole bunch of different 15 minute tasks. So stay tuned on that. Um, another thing that I'd like to though throw out there is that Sometimes it's important to just think about people over the time confetti. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. Um, one of the places that I regularly stop for coffee, uh, the person, the woman that was serving me coffee, you could tell was having a real bad day and she just kind of wanted to talk to somebody. And I could have just grabbed my coffee and run, but I didn't want to do that, right? Like I wanted to take the minute to listen to this person's story, talk to her a little bit. And honestly, like that was a much better, you know, mental boost. It was great to talk to somebody and just have that point of connection. You know, that was way better use of 15 minutes than writing any old academic paragraph. I would still say that. But, you know, so sometimes you are going to use those times to, you know, catch up with that colleague that's down the hall that you never talk to because you're so busy. Um, you know, and I, I do think that's important. But you might also need those time confetti times to, you know, just recharge your batteries, go outside and just stare at the clouds for a little bit or get some fresh air. You don't have to use all of them in the name of hyper efficiencies. Um, you know, maybe if you find two 15 minute scraps in a day and you say, I'm going to use those for writing and anything else is just for me to do whatever I want to do. I can look at Instagram. I can listen to music. I can order, you know, something on Amazon that I've been wanting to read, whatever it is you want to do. So hopefully this gives you some suggestions. Um, I also want to encourage you, we still are offering our free 30 minute consultations. So feel free to use one of those for a time management thing you want to think out, like how you might use 15 minute scraps for a project, a specific project that you're working on. Um, if you just go to our website, defendandpublish.com, scroll down, there's a button that says click to schedule grab one of those half hour slots, it's free. And you can talk to us about some ways that you might be able to just use those smaller time uh, periods for your writing project.
I also want to encourage you to sign up for our December 1st um, free webinar on Eventbrite. So this is uh, this episode's being recorded in November of 2019, and this webinar will be held on December 1st of 2021. So if you're interested, go to Eventbrite and type in Defend and Publish, and you'll find all of our free webinars and then some workshops that are three hours long that are usually on some larger topic and are more in-depth with some free templates. So check those out, and happy writing! Thank you.